Going to work life. Let's put it here up. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد إن شاء الله we'll continue our session on the usul al fiqh today and I will a little bit review first what we covered last week and then إن شاء الله we'll move on to the new subject which is the qarina we'll we'll cover إن شاء الله today so last last week we talked about uh, what is a hukum shari and uh, what are the two different kinds of hukum shari are there? Uh, one is uh, from the kitab uh, taklif or hukum uh, taklifi, and the other one was kitab uh, wada. And uh, as we talked about here, so uh, I'll move on to the one which has uh, uh, English translation along with the Arabi. This uh, and inshallah, what we will do is when we upload the slides, it will have both. Um, so. Those two types uh, of hukum uh, shari uh, are there, and uh, we talked about last week that uh, when it comes to the hukum taklifi, which is which are the commissioned ones, it is the legislator's address requiring the subject to uh, perform or to omit or to have a choice in in the actions, and uh, when it comes to al uh, iqtada or to perform or omit an action. There are uh, two different kinds of, uh, of uh, talab or demands from Allah Azza wa Jal from the Shara. And uh, the first one is to act upon it, to perform an action. And the other one is to uh, omit or to leave an action, uh, which is a prohibition of an action. Now, when it comes to the actions where Allah Azza wa Jal expects uh, uh, his uh, subject to, uh, to perform an action, there are two categories of actions. One is called uh, uh, the fard, uh, uh, fard or wajib, so it has similar meanings, and uh, which is oblig obligatory action. Uh, that action becomes an ob obligatory when the command is jazim. And we talked about that last week. Jazim means decisive. And uh, if the command that is coming from Allah Azza wa Jal in the form of the wahi from the Quran or the Sunnah, and uh, that that command is rare uh, jazim, meaning the, it is not uh, uh, it is not decisive in the uh, uh, the command itself is not decisive, and we'll talk about that inshallah today some part of it. How do you evaluate uh, the ayat or the ahadith uh, that uh, which one is considered as jazim, uh, which one is not, which is the basically the qarina part of it. Now. Now, when the talab, uh, when the talab is uh, to, to, to tark uh, an action, meaning to, to leave an action, or the prohibition of an action is defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in that demand from Allah also can be divided into two uh, different categories. If the command uh, carries uh, the jazim or decisive uh, prohibition, then in that case, that uh, specific uh, action will be considered as haram, uh, which means that uh, the action has to be, uh, we have to uh, uh, stay away from the action. And the uh, other action, which is rare uh, jazim, that action is considered as makruh. So again, going back to uh, if the command is to perform an action, if it's decisive, it becomes a fart. If the command is to omit an action or to not, uh, prohibition is there, and the command is jazim, then it becomes a haram. Okay? Now, Going back to the, again, the one which is for the man for performing an action, which is here, uh, and uh, oops. and if uh, the action is rare, uh, if the command is rare jazim, not decisive, then that uh, action will be considered as sunnah, mandu or mustahab. And if the command, which is to omit an action, not to perform an action, but the, uh, the, 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 the wordings are in a manner, or action is done in a manner that it is rare jazim, it's not decisive, then the action is considered as makru. Now, the other part of commissioned actions are uh, called takhir uh, or the choices there, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a command in which uh, he has given the option of, uh, of to do an action or to leave an action. So that action is considered uh, as mubah or permissible action. Now, 
uh, when it comes to uh, the khitab wada or uh, the the hukum wada it is uh, the legislators address that shows what the ruling of human action dictate on the matters on which verification of the verdict or its completion depend meaning like the hukum uh, taklifi it actually uh, uh, organizes the actions of the uh, of the uh, of the of the man uh, when it comes to the 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 khitab wada uh, that actually uh, organizes the khitab taklif uh, which is all these actions whether it's har- uh, for the sunnah uh, haram makruh or mubah it is organized by uh, the khitab wada which uh, con- which is consists of cause which is sadad or short which is condition um, and uh, impediment which is mana or the something that prevents a hukum so cause is something that because of that cause to be there then the the hukum come into existence and when it comes to short or condition when you fulfill the condition then you can uh, fulfill the command which is uh, supposed to be t- taken care of uh, impediment of mana is uh, are those uh, uh, impediment is if if an action is done by somebody that can prevent a hukum to be executed now. So it is kind of a, a opposite of sabab. So when this mana this thing exists, then the hukum will not be implemented. In the cause in the cause in the case of the sabab, when the sabab exists, then the hukum uh, come into existence. And in this case, hukum goes away. Like for example, if a person kills his father, then he will not be able to inherit from his father. Uh, so, uh, of course, the, the regular hukum, the standard hukum here is that uh, if the father passes away, then the son inherits from the father. But if the fa- son uh, is the one who, bec- he, who, who kills his father, in that case, he will not be able to inherit from his father. Okay, now, then we talked about the azima and ruqsa. Uh, when it comes to azima, azima is the, the, the commanded hukum or the determined hukum by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and ruqsa is if that c- commanded hukum uh, has been given some relaxation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so for example, the commanded hukum is uh, to fast in the month of Ramadan, but if a person is traveling or a person is, uh, uh, is sick, uh, then in that case, he has the ruqsa of, uh, if, he, if he wants, uh, he has a ruqsa, has a permission from Allah azza wa jal that, he can uh, he he cannot he should not fast he may not fast and if he fasts it's okay but if he does not fast he has the permission from Allah subhanahu wa taala and he can uh, complete the fast in some other days. Then we talked about the uh, uh, seha or fasad or butlan. Now, which is uh, seha is the the valid uh, 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 and the uh, fasad is corrupted and butlan is invalid. Now, this is actually about an action. Uh, when the action is done, that actually defines the quality of an action. Whether the quality of an action is considered as sahih, meaning it has uh, action uh, has been done in a manner that was commanded from Allah Azza wa Jal, and all the uh, basic tenets of uh, uh, the action have been fulfilled. Like in the case of the sale, uh, all the basic uh, uh, pillars of the sale have been taken care of. But if some of the, uh, if those ba- main pillars, for example, in the case of a sale, if uh, a person he is uh, uh, he is uh, he's, he's selling something to somebody which is a stolen good now uh, or, or he does not own that thing in that case that uh, sale will be considered as invalid because for a uh, a thing to be sold to somebody else it has to be owned by somebody first it cannot be just a, uh, you cannot sell a stolen good and if the, other, if the other person is aware of it is a stolen good it is haram to buy that kind of a good now uh, and the corrupted is in the if there are certain things have not been fulfilled properly then uh, the that uh, the agreement or the the aqad can be considered as is still good but it has some uh, uh, corruption in it that can be fixed in the case of invalid action, then uh, it is actually haram to be involved in, and it is as if the action was not done yet. Okay. Okay. So that's what about the hukum shari part we talked about, uh, and I want to just bring it up in the t- in a tabular form so it is easier for uh, for us to look at it and understand it, and I think it's easier to absorb and remember as well. Um, so, uh, as I said last week, also what we'll do is if, uh, if there are any questions, 
you can start writing the, the questions there uh, in the chat box, whether you are on the Zoom or whether you are on uh, wherever you are at. And inshallah, uh, I think uh, Brother Jawad or Sajid are taking care of it to let me know what the questions are and uh, I will try to answer them. Uh, and uh, if there are no questions on that slide, or the subject, I'll continue on, inshallah. But if there, there is anything, please do, do write it down now. And, uh, and uh, if uh, you can always ask the question at the end as well. So it seems like there is uh, something there. Okay, no, there's no question. Okay. Now, um, when it comes to, uh, when we talked about this, uh, when a hukum becomes a fard, a talab of fa'al, uh, the meaning, the, the action which have been demanded by for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you distinguish if the action is a fard or action is a sunnah? Uh, the way we tell is if the hukum is, uh, if the command is jazim or ghair jazim. Same thing goes for the talab tarq, meaning demand or to omit, jazim or ghair jazim. So to, to do that, we uh, to, to understand that, we have to know uh, uh, the qarina or the uh, indicators in the text or in the actions uh, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or uh, if an action done in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if he stayed silent. Uh, so all those things that are from the Quran and Sunnah, we looked at it, we evaluated that, uh, that text. And from there, you can tell if that indicator is indicating, uh, whether it is indicating certainty or uh, uh, is telling us the hukum is jazim, then that's the first category here mentioned there. And if the Adam al jazm is there, meaning the uh, uh, the certainty is not there in the command. Then uh, that will be uh, the one that can trigger uh, a command if it is for uh, to do an action. Then it will become a sunnah. Uh, and if it is a command not to do an action, then it will go into the category of makruh. It will not be haram then. Now, the third uh, part of the qarina, there are three kinds of qarina. And the third, uh, the third kind is called in which that uh, the, the hukum is uh, al-istiwa. Al-istiwa means uh, it is uh, equal, meaning it's not commanding us to do something or not to do something, meaning it is left to the uh, people to, do, uh, to act whichever way they want. Uh, and they come in the category of the mubah. Okay. So that's what about the Qarina. Now, when it comes to the Qarina and when we talk about the first category, so remember there are three categories here, right? So first one that is Jazim, second one is Ghair Jazim, and third one is Istawa, meaning it's a, a, a case of equal uh, weight. Now, when, so today, inshallah, I will try to cover part of the jazm category, which is a certainty. And uh, there are about 12 of them mentioned here. And of course, uh, you, may, you may find some uh, differences among the scholars in certain things, but uh, this is uh, some, of, uh, so some of them, which are, uh, inshallah will cover in, uh, in our Surah Al-Fatih class here. Now, so there are 12 of them. Uh, and I will actually, instead of going one by one like that, I will go into detail of each one. So there are six I mentioned this slide and then six more here. So the first one, which is an action or saying, uh, talking about from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that mentions the punishment in this world or hereafter directly or in its meaning. Meaning, if an ayah comes in and it commands us to do an action, now that ayah is connected with either a punishment in this dunya, meaning uh, if uh, uh, Islamic State is there, they're implementing the rules of Allah Azza wa Jal, then, and if the person breaks uh, certain rules, for example, if uh, he was commanded to do an action and he's not doing uh, the obligatory action, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that he can be punished for that, uh, uh, or uh, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has connected uh, that action of doing or not doing to uh, punishment in the day of judgment. For example, here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah al mentions, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ That uh, what puts you into the Saqar? Saqar, uh, saqar is one of the uh, one of the types of the hellfire that Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in the Quran. And uh, uh, they will uh, they'll be asking them that uh, what puts you in the Saqar? Why, why were you in? So they will say we were not of those who prayed, meaning salah itself, that is a point that points towards the salah is an obligation as well. Because 
not doing the salah caused the, uh, uh, the subject to end up in the hellfire. Okay, so uh, the, this goes to the first uh, qarina that we are talking about. Uh, and then Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَالسَّارِقُ وَالسَّارِقَ فَاقْتَوُوا عَيْدِيَهُمَا جَزَاءٌ بِمَا كَسَبَ نَكَالًا مِنَ اللَّهِ As for the thief, male or female, uh, cut their hand uh, uh, in recompense for what they committed. Yeah, what they committed as deterrent from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, and uh, and I continue on. Wallahu Azizun Hakim, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is exalted in might and wise. Um, so here, uh, uh, the, the stealing is the action that was uh, mentioned here, and it is connected to the punishment in this dunya. Not talking about the akhirah. If the person gets away in this dunya. Uh, uh, somehow, uh, meaning uh, uh, then it's between, them, uh, between that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is referring to that a person who steals male or female, his hand will be cut. Of course, it's talking about when Islam is an implementation phase. Uh, and that's done by, uh, by the state. It's not an uh, individual's act or something that uh, people can do. Uh, so, uh, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here that this is for the uh, recompense for what they committed. So that will deter, uh, uh, it's a deterrent punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and there's an interesting uh, uh, story about this, uh, uh, this ayah uh, that one of, the, uh, one of the guys, he was reciting the, the, this ayah and instead of saying, well, Allah azizun hakim, he said, well, Allah wa rahim. And uh, one of uh, the Arabi who did not know this ayah, but he said, uh, uh, is this the word of Allah? He said, yes. Then he said, then it cannot say, Wallahu Rahim here. Uh, and uh, he checked and it says, yes, it's Wallahu Aziz Hakim. So how did he know? He, said, he was asked. And he said, because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that uh, there is a punishment for an action. And then uh, uh, after that, after the punishment is there, and then he says he, he's forgiving, it, these two things cannot come, uh, come together. Uh, so that the Quran is very accurate in in the wordings, the way it uses, uh, and even a person who was not aware of the Quran, but he was and he understood the uh, language, he was able to tell that what was a mistake in there. Okay, and then let's move on to the uh, next example of the same indicator. Allah Subhanahu wa says, "Inna ladina yakuluna amwal al-yatama, dulman innama yakuluna fi butunihim nara, wa sayasluna sa'ira." Uh, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, the, those people who eat the wealth of the, uh, of the orphans in, uh, in an oppressive manner uh, uh, by, by oppressing them. Uh, and it is as if they are filling their stomachs with the, uh, uh, with the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and they will be burned in, uh, they will be burned in blaze. So again, the, this hukum of not, uh, 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 not eating the wealth of the, the orphans uh, uh, in the wrongfully manner uh, uh, because it is haram uh, uh, and it's jazm because it is connected to the punishment of the hellfire. Okay, so that's the first uh, uh, indicator. And now the, uh, the second indicator, and inshallah, uh, after the second one, I'll take a pause if there's any questions or comments. Uh, I'll try to answer them, uh, else uh, we'll go at the end, inshallah. Okay, now the second uh, indicator uh, for the jazz in category is an action or saying if it's done constantly, okay, except when an excuse or permission is given from Allah Azza wa Jal. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, a permission f uh, in, uh, f uh, for a for a further action uh, uh, in normal life, it has to be done all the time. It's an obligation. Like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about uh, fasting. It is an obligation. But uh, in the case of the difficulty, Allah is given, giving a permission or ruhsa here. When he is giving the ruhsa, it means also that the command is decisive, that it is an obligation. Because the ruhsa is in a manner that <coughs> It, it is for a very difficult situation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given ruqsa and in this case of fasting, that has to be uh, completed later on anyways. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, 
كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that ayah uh, defines the obligation of fasting. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on that ayyam ma'adudat, that these are few days in number. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفْرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ And the one who are sick or the one who are traveling, then they, they are given this option of they can count these days later on. Okay, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on and get, mentions about uh, that, uh, that the one who cannot do that and they can get, feed the uh, masakin, uh, but it is better if they, uh, if they fast. Okay, so that's in a second qareena. Uh, 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 and uh, within that, there are some more examples just for the clarity, inshallah, I will discuss. Uh, as we are aware that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, uh, has made wudu as a condition for salah, meaning it is, some, it is a shart, it is a condition, and without that, we cannot do the salah. Now, uh, for the wudu, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, that says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَأَمْسَهُ بِرْؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُوا لَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَانِ So this is the method Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned in this part of the ayah that uh, how you make the wudu. And this is something Allah has commanded us. Now, see, uh, but this is a command, but it's not connected right now to anything that can show that it is jazm or not. Now, the jazzing part comes in that Allah is talking about if you don't find water, for example, right? In the case, So if you do not find water, in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, then go and do the tayyamam. See, that is an indicator that it is an obligation to do wudu. And if the wudu is not there, then there is alternative Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here. Okay. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions about مَن نَسِيَ صَلَاةً أَوْ نَامَ عَنْهَا فَكَفَّارَتُهَا أَنْ يُصَلِّيهَا إِذَا ذَكَرَهَا That one who has forgotten the prayer or he fell asleep, then the kafara or uh, uh, recompensation for the salah is, then you do it as you remember. So see, uh, it is consistently been mentioned that the salah has to be done. And even in the case that you somehow missed it because of you forgotten, or you, uh, uh, or you fell asleep during the salah time, uh, then in those cases, Allah subhanahu uh, uh, so wa ta'ala mentioned that, then when you remember, the moment you remember, then you go ahead and you do the salah. Now, uh, similarly, is for the hukum, is for the, for the women as well, that uh, they are given the ruhsa. Uh, uh, that, that uh, they are not, uh, that they don't pray actually during the, 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 the days of uh, periods or uh, hide and once they are done then they go and uh, pray again. Okay, so that's the uh, second part of the uh, uh, jazm or uh, how you tell if the hukum carries uh, certainty or decisiveness or not. Uh, so I'll take a pause here again. If there is any questions or comments, inshallah, I'll try to answer. Otherwise, uh, I'll continue on. Okay. Um, uh, who is moderating today, by the way? So I would know if I, if I should pause or not. Here. The ruksa is only for difficulties. Uh, yes, and uh, but the ruksa is the question. I'm not sure if it's a question or it's a comment. Ruksa, uh, the ruksa is only for the difficulties. Uh, yes, but uh, the ruksa is given by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself. It's not that we uh, start making our own uh, uh, permissions. Or say that I have a ruksa, this is too difficult to do, so we're not going to do it. No. Uh, the idea here is, and we will see later on other uh, Qarain as well, that talks about that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, even though he was going through difficult situations, he did not change his path. That itself is another Qarina to 
to conclude that this is an ob uh, obligation action or it is jazim. It is decisive that it has to be done that is in a specific manner. Right now we're talking about is there are cases where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the permission. That giving permission itself is another sign of being jazim. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now the third kind of uh, uh, of this karina is uh, <clears throat> if uh, and this is what I was talking about. If an action or saying uh, shows const uh, or action or saying is done constantly, constantly done, even with hardships, without any alternative, was given. Meaning, uh, uh, like for example. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Kutib alaykum al qital, wa huwa um, There is a clarification on the last question, so let me paste that um, before you continue. Sorry. Okay. Uh, there you go. You said rukhsa is for the difficulties. My question is, in each rukhsa, Allah gave it. Is it due to difficulties, or did He, at times, give a rukhsa not tied to difficulty? Uh, uh, it doesn't have to be always difficulty. Uh, we, we can see that that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us the rukhsa, for example, uh, the hukum to uh, to wash the uh, in the case of the wudu, there's a hukum to you can wash the feet. Now at the same time, it is also given a rukhsa that if you have put the socks in the state of wudu when you are not traveling. Uh, then you can still continue to do the masah, masah al or uh, uh, wipe your socks if those socks were, were worn in the state of wudu. So it's not necessarily a difficult, very difficult thing to take the socks off and wash them, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ruhsa. Uh, so again, the main thing is the, the one who's given the ruhsa is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he has given the ruhsa, this is uh, 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 something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Maybe you can consider that taking the socks is, is a difficult thing. Uh, yeah. So, but it's not the issue of uh, we tie it to any kind of a difficulty. It's uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has just given a permission or given us a ruksa for certain things. Okay. Uh, and I think uh, the next one uh, clarifies a little bit more to the one that we just talked about. So it's not the issue of the moment you have a difficulty, it means that then you 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 look for some ruksa or look for some uh, permission from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to not to do a, do a hukum. Uh, like in the case here, uh, and that also itself is a sign that shows that hukum is jazim, that Allah has given a, a hukum, even though it's difficult, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, uh, did not give us any kind of uh, alternative there. So it has to be done the way it has been commanded. That Allah has prescribed you fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though you, you don't like it, you, you dislike it to fight. And Allah is not saying because since you're, just because you dislike it, okay, let me give you some other options here. No, this is an option. Uh, this is not an option. This is a command, and it has to be done when Allah it is uh, obligatory. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, we can see that uh, in the time in, uh, in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that uh, when uh, he, in his Mecca, Mecca life, when he was working uh, to establish the Deen of Allah azza wa jal. And uh, he was uh, going through very difficult times uh, in, uh, on an individual level himself and, uh, uh, and all the Sahaba, uh, especially the weak ones were more target than the stronger ones. And Rasulullah was a special target for, for the Kuffar. And they were trying to hurt Rasulullah in many ways, whether it was a physical uh, torture or even try, uh, they, he, there were attempts to assassinate Rasulullah and uh, similar things uh, happened to the Sahaba uh, as well. But uh, uh, while all this was going on, and uh, Rasulullah did not change any of his uh, uh, tactics or the, the rules that Allah, the commands Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordained on him. So when he was ordered to go and look for talab, do the talab al nusra or look for support from uh, the different tribes, uh, for example, to so they will accept Islam and support him to implement the, the deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, even through a very difficult time, when it comes to, for example, uh, b b 
when they went to Taif, uh, the people of Taif, they, uh, they were very harsh with Rasulullah to a point that they send uh, slaves and, uh, and boys to throw stones at Rasulullah and uh, that uh, hurt Rasulullah to a point that he, he, he was bleeding to the point that his shoe was filled with blood. And uh, uh, similar and worse even uh, incidents are mentioned in the seerah when the Rasulullah went to uh, other tribes as well. But that did not cause or that did not change Rasulullah's actions in that case or the method he was using to, uh, to gain uh, the success or to gain the Nusra. Uh, and he continued the path of the tusra, uh, Nusra as is to, for the Layqam al Dawla, meaning to establish the state. Uh, that, is a, uh, uh, that itself is a sign uh, that it is Jazim, that it is decisive that uh, the Talab al-Nusra is part of the method and it has to be done that way when we are working to re regain the, the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth. Now, similarly, uh, 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 you will otherwise see and if, 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 if it is done constantly, uh, and but it is not jazim, you can see in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu that Rasulullah sallallahu pointed it out. Like for example, he said, لَوْلَا أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي uh, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, what I not been afraid or was not be, be difficult for my followers, I would order them to use the siwak uh, uh, for, for, for all the, for, 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 for every salah. This hadith is reported by Bukhari. Uh, now, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa pointed it out that uh, in this case, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned that it is not an obligation. Okay. Now, the fourth one is uh, the ahkam that actually uh, shows that uh, uh, the, uh, that it is an obligation. It, uh, the command shows that it is an obligation, or it's, uh, it's talking about or explaining the obligation, or it is a subject. Its subject is obligatory, or meaning is uh, guarding of Islam. What means by that, and we'll go, when you look at the example, it makes more sense, inshallah. When Allah Azza wa Jal says, Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that there should be a group among you, a group that calls people towards khair, and khair here is Islam, good uh, towards the good, uh, and they enjoin the good, uh, enjoy, while they are, uh, they are enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. And they are the ones who are successful. Now here, uh, because the, the work of the group is to uh, call people towards Islam. Now that is an obligation itself, number one thing, to call people towards Islam. But here we are talking about uh, guarding Islam here because uh, you are enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, that's another obligation. And there are other ahkam regarding that. Uh, and the, uh, to, to have a group that, who calls for people towards Islam and uh, uh, enjoying the good and forbid the evil, because that's the uh, calling towards Islam means so do, you can implement Islam. Now, implementation of the Islam actually guards the Islam as a whole, because uh, we know that uh, different scholars discuss this in a different manner that uh, 80 or 90% of the Islam, for example, cannot be implemented unless you are implementing the Islam as a, as a state. There's a ruler who's implementing the Islam. So if that's not there, then uh, you are just uh, following the limited Islam that you can, fi or you can, you can follow it uh, on individual basis. So that's the, uh, the, that call or uh, having a group to work for this cause becomes an obligation. Okay, so the, the, the Islam can be, uh, can be, it can, can be guarded here. Now, uh, other, uh, 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 other uh, uh, hadith, for example, that talks about when the hadith says, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Now, salah itself is for. Now, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni, meaning uh, uh, pray as you see me usalli, as you see me pray. So now here, uh, how part is coming, in this hadith. Now the how is, which, uh, which means the explanation of the obligation. How do you perform the obligation? So now this, how you pray to follow that is also an obligation because this is explaining already decisive hukum, which is a salah and how to, do, to be done is mentioned here. Similarly, 
the, the issue of the Hajj. When the Rasulullah says, manasikakum fa inni la adi la alila hujju ba'da hajjati hadi. Yani, hadi. Yani, Rasulullah is saying that take, learn manasik, uh, 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 manasik of the Hajj, uh, you learn from me. Because I don't know if I will be, uh, uh, be performing hajj after this uh, hajj of mine. So uh, hajj is an obligation. Now Rasulullah is telling them, uh, telling the Sahaba here in this case, or telling us that learn from him. So now those rituals, uh, the, 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 to learn about the hajj, it is an obligation. Then, because the hajj itself is an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Let's see what the time is. Okay, so probably we'll just go up to five today and inshallah we'll cover the rest later. Okay, uh, the number five is a statement or to implement an, uh, an order or command on the choice between uh, uh, on the choice between several provisions are limited to it. Meaning, okay, the, the English is a little bit messed up here. But uh, uh, what it means by that is, if the command comes in in a manner that it gives you the options, limited options. So now when it gives you limited option, it means the command itself, it becomes a jazim, a certain command to be done. And it, should, it can only be done within those choices that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. Like in the case when the, when the ayah says, حُيَيْتُمْ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّهَا here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about salam. For example, when you greet with, uh, with a greeting. Uh, greet in return with what is better than it, or at least return it equally. So because these are the only two options are mentioned regarding uh, the returning of the salam, then returning the salam becomes an obligation. Okay? So that's what it means by when we are talking about uh, uh, the choice. If the choice is given in a manner that you are restricted to that choice, then uh, the command itself is decisive and we have to follow, uh, that, that has to be done. It, may, it carries either a fard or it carries a, uh, a haram or prohibition command. Okay. Then another example of that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about اللَّهُ بِاللَّغْبِ فِي أَيْمَانِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يُعَاخِذُكُمْ بِمَا أَقَدْتُمْ وَالْأَيْمَانِ Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that uh, when you uh, take oath, uh, Allah does not uh, oath, uh, punish the, uh, if, if those are done in an unintentional manner. Uh, and if he will, uh, but he will punish you for the deliberate, uh, the oath that you really mean it, you took the oath. And in that case, if you break the oath, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then the kafara, uh, meaning the expiation, is عَشَارَةِ masakina. Meaning that either you feed uh, 10 masakin with the food that you normally feed your family, uh, or you uh, give them clothing, uh, or you free a uh, person. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, mentioned oh, yeah, here. Somebody, um, there is a clarification needed for the, some of the other choices before you. So they're, they're saying an example of some other choices. Is there a question there somewhere or? There, I think you gave some examples. They want more examples. Let me ask for clarification. Hang on. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, uh, uh, for, for, uh, then the ayah continues on. For man, uh, for, 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 for man lam yajid for And then if you uh, cannot do any of those things, meaning feeding the first poor or uh, uh, dressing them or freeing a slave, then uh, you can fast for three days. So these are, this is the kafara that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, uh, which means that uh, for the taking care of the kafara is an, is an obligation over here in the case of uh, uh, not uh, taking care of, the, of your oath. Okay, well, what is the question? I'm sorry, I did not hear you properly. Um, I'm actually asking for clarification, so you go ahead, continue. As soon as I get something, I'll uh, paste it on the chat. No, uh, that, 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 that's all it was about in here. The point is here is this. Let me just uh, rephrase it again. What it means by that is, if uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a command, and with the command, how to be done, Allah has mentioned the choices. I has already given the choices, meaning it has to be fulfilled within these two, two choices. 
So since the choices are given, it means the action must be done within the choices. That's fine, it's within the choices, but it must be done. So it becomes jazim. So for example, if you say salam, then the one who has been given the salam to, he has to return either better than what the salam was given or the same, equal. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that return it in this manner, then it is an obligation now, it's a jazim that you have to uh, reply. So it's not a choice now to answer the salam. Okay, the choice itself is the one that's making it jazim. Is that clear? Actually, the clarification came. Can you give an example of a couple of examples where the jazing give multiple choices, as you said? Uh -huh. what, do you, what do you mean by multiple choices in the command? See, in, in the ayah itself, ayah itself is saying that, right? When we say, for example, here, uh, in the case of salam, let's stay, stick with the command, uh, the command. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, uh, uh, that okay? uh, meaning that if somebody says salam to you then you are replying with better than what he said to you or uh, replied equally so the command is to reply now how do I tell that when Allah is saying reply the salam here how do I tell if this is fard or this is sunnah here Meaning, it is, is it an obligation for me? Because we understand that every, uh, every talab, every demand from Allah Azza wa Jal does not mean that the moment there's a, there's a command to do it, it means it becomes an, it's an obligation right away. It can be obligation. I'm not saying it cannot be. It's just we have to evaluate the command. And here, when Allah is saying, فَحَيُّ حَيُّ is a, uh, uh, is a command. It's a, it's a, uh, Allah is commanding to say salam back. Now, but, but then Allah is also saying, how do you do this? Be ahsana minha or duha, meaning when it is limited to two choices, there's no third choice of not to say salam. So there's only two choices for us, either say equally or better. So that means that replying to salam is an obligation. Does that clarify? I think, I think the question, Asim, is that can there be a command that has two choices within the command? As opposed to you're saying that there's a, there, there's a it, command given, you have a, a choice of do it or do it better. Can there be a command that has two, that, two choices? And this then, is two choices. Right. Do it or do it better is two choices, right? Right, for the one command though. Say for instance, in the command, there's like two, two, two options given in the command. Uh -huh. Then what do you do? Then you're limited to those two. So then it's one or the other. So if it's one, then you have uh, that one or better. And if yeah. you have two, th then it's between the two choices that are given. Yeah, but you're, rest but you're restricted by those two, whatever the choices are given. Okay. See, the, the, that's the difference we were going to talk about when we talk about the third category of the Qarina, where it is talks about the Estewa, meaning Allah has left it on us to do or not to do an action. Okay. So when it's left it like this, then it becomes a Mubah. But here, it's the issue is do. Now, the, the, the do part is how to do it, right? So since it is restricted, the, the command has to be done, but it is done in a, uh, it was commanded with two choices. So the choice is left to us between these two, you cannot go outside. So when Allah is restricted between the two, that restriction shows that it is, uh, it is an obligation. That's the part we are trying to study here in this section. Similarly, when we are talking about the next example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the kafara, of uh, of the oath in that case allah is giving multiple choices but uh, so uh, like uh, uh, feed the 10 uh, 10 poor people uh, the food that you normally feed your family or uh, uh, you dress those people or you uh, 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 or you free a slave now between these three there's a choice you can do any of them if you cannot find any of these three then the command for them for malam yajid I mean, you cannot find that, then you go and do this, the third, uh, fourth one. Um, okay, so uh, we will inshallah stop here.
uh, as I said, I, I, I don't want to go and, uh, and discuss too many things and it becomes, uh, I guess, difficult to retain as well. Uh, but if there's any other questions or comments, uh, inshallah, I'll try to answer. Inshallah, before we go to any questions, I'd just like to remind our viewers that we will have this, uh, this presentation available as a link on, in the YouTube channel. Uh, in the description section, there'll be a link where you can download the presentation. Inshallah. Inshallah. And I, I'll, I'll probably add uh, some uh, references also to, the, to, to these presentations also, the books that uh, it has been extracted from. Uh, so I cannot see uh, the questions. So you guys have to help me out. Just let me know if uh, uh, there's any questions somewhere else that need to be answered. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the brother right. is waiting to ask or typing the question. Yeah. Just give one second. Okay. Inshallah, also, Brother Asim, if we can uh, provide the references for some of these uh, these things that you've uh, put on your slides, if we can also include that in the um, in the description of the YouTube. Inshallah, I will. Uh, that's what I said. So what I'll do is I'll put the link of. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I will. I'll put the but I'll put the uh, references also. Inshallah. Yeah, I can log into the YouTube and see if there's any questions, right? Yeah, currently there's no questions on YouTube. However, the brother is asking if he can ask one more question. I think we're just waiting for him to okay. provide okay. that question. Something is there now in the chat. Oh, no, that's just a... Okay, so the question is, if so, so if there is one choice that choice becomes an obligation but let's say there are two choices in the command which one is the obligation or uh, would they be sunnah um so uh okay uh, i think this is what you were asking yeah i think you already addressed that. Yeah, you already no, but i think i did not understand the question now i understand what the question is here now here uh, 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 it, so it, it there, there are two parts we're discussing here one is that the uh, it is jazim that you have to reply in the case of salam, for example. Now that carries the response is a fardiya. Now within that, uh, it is better to do uh, the salam in a better uh, in a better manner. But the least is so to fulfill the obligation. The least is you you answer back in an equal manner. Okay. Uh, There's another question posted. Yeah. Some commands are not an obligation, correct? When is it not an obligation command? So uh, when, when a command comes in and it's غير jazim, uh, so we will talk about that other part of the Qarina as uh, let me just go back and uh, let me show here what we talk about. Okay, it's not letting me go for some reason. So there is more to that question. Yeah. Let me just, uh, so the brother will remember, inshallah. So uh, we talked about the, the, the three kind of uh, Qaraim. First one is the one that carries jazim or certainty. In the case of it carries certainty, and this is what we are studying, we were studying today and we'll continue to study next week as well. Uh, these are the ones that carry that it's a must to do or must not to be done, meaning as prohibition or a, a haram or fard we're talking about here. Now, 
a command can come and command may not carry uh, uh, decisiveness, certainty, or it's not jazm. So it will come under adamul jazm, meaning it's ghair jazm. Then in that case, if it's a command to do an action that will become mustahab or sunnah action, okay? And if the action is done, uh, a command is not to do an action by ghair jazm, then in that case, that will become a makruh action, okay? So for example, and inshallah, when we get to, get to that point, we will clarify those as well. It could be linguistically, it could be because of uh, the, the Qur'an that we were talking about today, if they are missing, and then it can lead to, uh, it is not decisive. So decisiveness has to be understood in that case as well, okay? Uh, then it says, Sultan of the British. Oh, that's the name, sorry. Oh, that's the name, okay. Uh, the certainty affected by the authenticity of hadith. Uh, so the, the, the whole thing about the authenticity of the hadith is a sub separate subject. And uh, uh, that, that will be covered, inshallah, uh, later on again. Uh, of course, the authenticity of the hadith is considered as that is there when we are talking about uh, being jazm. If the hadith is uh, da'if, it's weak, uh, it cannot carry, uh, but but I think it's a subject of its own. Let's not just take it as a, a thing like authenticity or non-authenticity like this. When inshallah it comes, we'll talk about that as well. Okay. Are we good here or? Um, no more questions so far. That's okay. Then we'll stop here, inshallah. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiru wa natubu ilayk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of the deen correctly. And if there's anything good came out of it from Allah Azza wa Jal, if there was any mistake, it is uh, solely from my own error. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, help to uh, correct ourselves, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, I'm going to